What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode number 10 of the Santana Podcast. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm Rio Santana. Later on, I'll be bringing my dad on, JC Santana. What a weekend. Uh, the family and I and my girl and the dog went to the west coast of Florida, uh, Cape Coral, got a big old Airbnb on the water, and simply relaxed. Didn't move. I think we took two trips to Publix, which was like 20 minutes and 20 minutes. Got about $500, $600 worth of food and collapsed on the couch and the bed all weekend long, feeling refreshed, feeling recharged, and bringing you guys episode 10. Got a lot of stuff to go over this week. Honestly, I know it wasn't a UFC week, and you guys know I love my UFC, but next week we'll be getting into fight week for UFC 297, uh, featuring two of our guys. We'll get into that in a little bit. But the big news... My black and yellow Steelers made it into the playoffs. Big help to the Tennessee Titans, or Jacksonville Jaguars, actually. There was one play. Uh, Jacksonville dropped back, I think, with like a minute 30 left, minute 40 left, and had a bomb post route about 50 to 60 yards down, and the wide receiver literally dropped it off his fingertips. Uh, my, my ass was in my stomach on that one, okay? That was a tight one. That was a tight one. And then a couple of plays later, incomplete on fourth, and I think seven or six or something. And uh, we got into the playoffs. Big, uh, big, big, big help to the Titans. Uh, we have the Buffalo Bills first round this Sunday coming up, 1 p.m., primetime uh, uh, afternoon football. And I'm excited. Yes, I'm nervous, excited, anxious, all that different stuff. Yes, I know we're in, but we got a bigger job. We got a big, big monster ahead of us. We got freaking the Buffalo Bills. In Buffalo, it's going to be cold in January. But honestly, I like our matchup. I like our matchup. It was either them, Dolphins, or Kansas City. Dolphins down in Miami, you know they're a freaking highlight reel team. They're like a video game. They're going to come out the first quarter and easily put... 20 points up 28 points and then from there they kind of weathered down but they got the run game they got the defense they got the passing they got it all All three of those teams are a nightmare situation um kansas city been up and down wide receivers dropping balls you know the only thing that you got to really stop is patrick mahomes doing patrick mahomes stuff and travis kelsey okay going going down the middle um with the bills you got allen you got dig and you got that defense and i know they fired their offensive coordinator uh, earlier this year and I think they're on a five-game winning streak, and we're on a three-game winning streak. The crazy thing is, with a team that has nothing to lose, and their back is against the wall, I like that. I honestly like that because we could play free. Granted, we do have some injuries coming up. TJ Watt is out probably for the remainder of the playoffs. I know he's a dog, and he's going to take every shot to try to come back, but I think it was a, a grade three sprain on the MCL. Um, and I was listening to some podcasts coming back home from the West Coast, and it looks like between four and six weeks, which takes us to mid-February, which is the Super Bowl, and season's done after that. So if uh, the worst comes to worst, we're out this week. TJ could go and rest and not rush back. You know, other than that, we make it to the Super Bowl. Please, please. Um, I don't think he's going to be playing, but you know how it is. If a miracle happens, it, it's going to happen for him. But anyways, yes, we have Buffalo in Buffalo. Um, I'm not going to give any predictions because I'm just going to be praying. And I'm going to be praying to God. All the football gods lined up for me last week. If you feel like doing me one more favor this week, it'll be beating Buffalo. Um, But playoff football is here. I'm super, super excited. Uh, It's must-watch football from now on because it's either win or go home. Uh, Talking about winning. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six. Seven game winning streak for the Florida Panthers. They've been t- kicking it ass. Last game we had, we put eight points up. I don't know what our season high has been for points, but I'm pretty sure that's up there if it's not the record. Okay? Um, all of our guys have been looking good. Defense have been solid. Goalies, you know, a little bit here and there. Four points is still a lot, but... We stop them when we need to stop them, and we score them when we need to score them. So huge shout-out to the Florida Panthers. Might be going to the game this week. Uh, Check it out for my birthday. Yes, this Saturday, January 13th, I will be 33 years old. 
Okay, 33 years young. I feel freaking stronger than I've ever felt, been healthier than I've ever felt. Uh, switching up my diet a little bit. My girl put me onto a documentary, if you guys haven't seen it yet. Uh, you Are What You Eat on Netflix. Uh, I think it's six to eight parts. It takes about half a dozen twins. Okay, male, female, black, white, tall, short, all that different stuff. And they put them on a plant-based and a carnivore diet. And one thing I do like about it is they don't shove either one down your throat. Okay, they sort of give you the pros and cons of each one. Obviously, you know, I'm Hispanic and Italian, so meat is almost in every freaking meal. A lot of it. Steak, I love steak. Uh, but I'm going to switch it up for the next 60 days and see how the plant-based diet is. Now, granted, listen, man, my birthday's coming up. Will I have some stuff? Yes, I will. But I'm going to try to switch it from being like a, a 30, 70%. I'm going to try to flip it and go 80%, 85% plant-based and see what that does. Okay, uh, I was more intrigued of what it does internally than externally with all the fat around your intestines, um, your biological clock, all that different stuff. So I'm going to check it out. Not saying that I'm going to get super skinny or super big. I just want to see what it does. I want to see how I feel. I've done it since Sunday. Today is Wednesday, I think it is. And I feel good. Nothing, no, no changes, but little things like different creamer in my, my coffee, uh, having greens with everything I have and having to eat more to get the calories and the protein. And holy cow, guys, I'm eating more freaking vegetables than I've ever had. I'm making them taste a little bit good. Big kudos to my fiance on that one. She does an amazing job cooking, keeping everything clean, but tasteful at the same time. So if you guys haven't seen it and you guys are interested in maybe mixing it up, 2024, new, you know, new year, new me, check it out. You are what you eat on, um, on Netflix. And the next one I'm going to watch is Game Changers. My mom put me on that one with Arnold and all the athletes. So again, I'm not going to this vegan thing or only plant-based. I'm just going to give something new a shot and see how I feel. Same thing I did when I dropped 50 pounds in 2022. I'm going to try something new and see how I feel. If I don't like it after 60 days, I'm going back to my steak, my veggies, my beans, and my rice. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Oh, the guy that broke the internet <laughs> last week, Cat Williams. I've never seen a video skyrocket that fast with just two people interviewing and not doing anything really outlandish or circuit, circus-like. I know some of the stuff, people agree, people don't agree, um, but the guy has been in show business for 20 plus years. He's been in a, a bunch of movies. He's one of the most funniest guys that I've ever seen in stand-up. I'm a huge fan of his stand-up, the new stuff and especially the old stuff. And his voice is just hilarious in Friday. So he is, to me, an OG of comedy. Um, do I agree with some of the stuff he said and how he went about it? No, but, I mean, shit, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I say some shit that you guys probably don't agree with, and I say some shit that you guys probably do agree with. So, uh, Mr. Cat Williams, kudos to you for breaking the freaking internet. I think it was, what, 10 million watches in seven hours or 10 hours, somewhere around there, and uh, super happy for Shannon Sharp and getting the exposure to his channel that was a great interview. It's about two hours and 46 minutes. Yes, I watched the whole thing. Half of it on the way to Cape Coral, half of it on the way back. Um, and man, some of the stuff that he just says, his story is crazy. One, definitely for the books. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. I think it's called Club Shay Shay with Cat Williams. It's, it's a story. And it just shows you that a lot of these guys go through trials and tribulations. Uh, and again, I'm not saying everything is true because I don't know cat personally i've just seen his journey once he sort of made it okay or on the process of making it but man i mean he was kind of homeless traveling the world at 13 14 15 years old learning educating himself hanging out with the ogs of comedy to living in a trailer during movies when you when you guys see these guys on screens you think oh he's a millionaire he's made no everybody has different journeys so again i'm not going to expose too much of the uh, interview but go go for sure check it out um and then last but not least guys this segment i want to bring into my dad will bring more details into it but this is the fhe ihp segment fhe is the number one mental health and substance abuse rehab center in the nation guaranteed they're right down the block from us they helped one of our athletes get back on his feet and become better Okay, and more other people as well too from fire departments, police officers, first responders, all that stuff. We did a workshop with them on the 29th to close out 2023. We're gonna do another workshop with them in two weeks to open 2024 and you should see the look on these guys' faces when the Thads, the Gregories, the Mark Andres, the Jackies walk in, they're like, 
you got them all shapes and sizes but when they put the mitts on and start teaching they're like okay we 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 need this we need this so huge shout out to fhe and ihp we are about six months into our partnership and the exposure and the growth and the help that we have done for each other you can't put a price tag on and this is going to be a partnership that lasts forever guaranteed you got my word on that so any further ado here comes the old man welcome to episode 10 guys <laughs> Hey, it's JC Santana coming to you from the Institute of Human Performance, kicking off 2020. I kicked 2023 in the ass on its way out. Still got my boots, so I'm, I'm wearing only one shoe. The other one is up 23's ass. Now we, I said to 24, bring it, you know, like Bruce Lee, like that. I gave him the Bruce Lee shit. Bring that weak ass shit and watch what happens. We got IHP going. We set a, a record uh, last year. We're going to set another record this year. And the app is coming out. Holy shit. And I am huge, bro. 228. I'm going to start dropping weight now. But I'm big and strong. All right. So Rio already laid down the law starting the uh, FHE segment. We're going to cap it here with some of the things that are going on. Because trainers are asking me, how do you deal with this last week? How do you deal with this last week? As you know... Mark Andre and Johan, from uh, from both Canadians, going at it uh, this uh, not not this Saturday, but uh, Saturday. So uh, from from uh, this Saturday, so it's on the twentieth. So now we have our last week of training. How do we handle it? Boom! From three weeks, from three weeks out. So this week and the last two weeks, we're going session for session. So we check in the morning. How are you doing? I just did uh, wrestling. How do you feel? A little tired. Okay. Don't come in or, okay, you know what? We're going to move power to today. We're only going to do sets, two sets of power so we can keep you strong and fast and you're out of here. It's a 30-minute workout, 20-minute workout just to keep our powder dry. If they're really beat up or injured, we go stay. Stay recovery. You're already ready. Recovery is more important than the training at this point because all we're doing is peaking and we're not peaking the body. We're peaking the mind and the mind doesn't take as hard to peak as the body. The body's morphological, circulation dependent, hormonal dependent, all these things take time. But you can change the mental attitude like a born again Christian that has an, ex uh, 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 an accident, sees the light and boom, right then and there, his life changes in one instant. So you can peak the mind that fast. We're just not magicians. We don't know what triggers it. So we can peak the central nervous system, which then peaks the sympathetic and parasympathetic all right, yeah, 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 yeah. we can get that shit going and it takes a little time. So that's what we're trying to do. So the training is irrelevant at this point. It's what the training does to the psychological profile that we're trying to manipulate. See, it's a little bit different. So right now, what I anticipate, and Mark Andre already texted me, what do we guys plan for this week? So right now with Andre and with Johan, okay, what, what I have in mind is a power session, which is easy. We're not doing... Um, the mini circuits that supplement the big circuits. No, they're already in shape. So what I want to do is convince them that they are ready. How do I do that? Number one, the power workout that takes about 25 minutes shows them that they're pushing, whether it's deadlifting, hex bar, squatting, bench pressing, whatever it is, they're handling top weight. So in mentally they go, wow, I'm starting to diet. I've been beat up through sparring and I'm still as strong as I was during my peak strength uh, phase. So, man, I'm as strong as I've ever been. Ha! Okay? Then comes the circuit on Saturday. So, the first workout, all we do is convince them that they're strong. Prove to them to they're strong. So, they got to live it. So, they got to push top weight, throw medicine balls fast. Got it. Mission accomplished without beating up the body. Then, on Saturday, we have a 18-minute, 19-minute workout ready. What is it? The three circuits. About five and a half minutes per circuit, between five and five and a half minutes, hard. One minute rest, five, five and a half, hard. One minute rest and five and a half, uh, five and a half minutes, and it's a wrap. It's three, five minutes more or less with a minute rest in between. So if you go five, 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 that's 15, minute, minute, that's 17, throw another 30 seconds. of They're looking at 19, 19 minutes. That's the workout. But they get here, they get ready, they set up the workout, they walk the workout, they mentally, it's the same thing as the fight. So what are we doing, guys? We're rehearsing the fight. And they tell me that Friday night, 
coming in for the circuit, they're nervous like they are for the fight. So we're mimicking the central nervous system, everything, the adrenaline dump, we're mimicking that for Saturday, for Saturday, for Saturday. I know they're going to hit it because they already hit something very close last week and the week before that, easy. So I know they're ready, you know. So right now, we're going to show them that they are at their best. Saturday's the last circuit. Goodbye. It's a weight cut Monday through Friday. Friday, they make weight and they go kick ass. <clears throat> so we're doing uh, really good. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this whole training thing and coaching in, in a little bit. But that's what's happening with Mark and uh, Johan. They're going to be ready. They're going to be ready, but you know how it is. Our job is to get them ready and say, it's a, it's been, all things considered, it's been a perfect camp. It couldn't go any better considering everything that <clears throat> we did, whether it was a virus, whether it's an infection, whether it's a, a, a knee twist, an elbow twist, a shoulder dislocate, whatever it is, considering that, it's a perfect camp. We couldn't have handled it any better. There's no regrets. There's nothing. You're perfect, as perfect as you can be. So go out there and execute. Then you let the boys settle it on, on Saturday. It's got nothing to do with you, coach. You've already done your job. That's why I don't even like going to UFC. I don't like being in the locker room and that whole fucking drama. It's bullshit, man. I want to be in my couch. You know where I do the work? I do the work eight weeks before, six weeks before. I don't miss a session. I show up. I show up for them. I'm calling them every day. I'm checking them every day. When they have a judgment call, should I do practice? Should I do this? Should I go to the doctor? What should I do? I'm the one. I'm one of the ones they call. And I don't have to be the confidant. I just feel good that they value my opinion. So if I'm the first, second, third, or fifth one they call, I don't give a shit. I'm honored for the call. And I'm honored to give them my input. They respect me. They love me. I love them. Done. Okay, so we're ready. We're ready to go. And I'm happy to have had uh, Johan remotely. Have had three conversations with the guy. Because if anything I wish about Johan is that he would get on the phone a little bit more. He's very busy running his own business, his own shit, and he doesn't like the phone. So it's all texts and emails, and I'm going, I hope he's doing the exercise right. You want to get on the phone? No, no, I'm good. I feel great. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to see how our boys do. All right, always an honor to work with them, and, and it's beautiful, beautiful. All right, so now we're going to one of my favorites, <clears throat> and that's why I told Rio to, you know, re recap UFC. He, Rio's a sportscaster. He's a, he knows sports. He loves sports. He watches sports. He studies sports. I don't do none of that shit. I study, I study humanity. I study my fighters, the personality of my fighters, the cold coaching. That's my shit. So my rant is going to be a little bit on how I coached my children. So this weekend, we went on a family, um, family get-together, just the kids and I, and, and, um, and Rio took his fiance Carla. We had a great time. We rented a big house, Cape Coral, on the canal. I fished three straight days, caught shit. But I was out there in the sunset, in the mornings with my coffee. It was beautiful. And I'm seeing my children, you know, react and uh, interact and, and, uh, and just be my kids. I'm watching movies I've seen three times because I haven't seen them once. We've seen movies that nobody's watched and we said, oh, wow, oh, great, oh, shit, you know. So we get all that, right? It was wonderful. So the topic came up. Uh, when, when I talk to my children, they say I'm constantly lecturing. no. I'm constantly being a father. What does a father you do? A father fathers you. What is that? I have to make you the most formidable person that I can make you or teach you to be the most formidable person you can be. That's a better way to put it because I don't make shit and you can't make a kid do anything. You can talk to them and if you hit the right chords, you hit them at the right time and they think about you the right way, they admire you, they respect you, some of it will stick and if some of it sticks, you'll, you'll be happy. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about some of the topics that came in and some of the arguments that they, they came. And I said, listen, it's not about winning the argument. I don't care about winning the argument because me winning the argument against a, a 20 year old, that's like a MMA. That's like Gregory beating the shit out of a 12 year old. You know, it's like no, you take no solace in that. What I want to do is I want to teach my kids how to debate, how to talk, how to debate issues that they may not be strong in. If you're not strong in an issue, like I'm not strong in politics, I'm not strong in world history, I'm not strong in finance, but I can discuss anything because I've learned to discuss things algorithmically, 
First, I have to prove this basic premise. Then I have to throw my theory into how this basic, how it fits with this basic premise. And then I'll use some history that you can't fax, history that prove that my theory interacts with this basic premise very well. And then go from there. And let me tell you, any person who is expert in the specifics will take you to the specifics. If you're not an expert in the specifics, stay with the basics. They can't beat the basics and they can't beat the facts. They can cite you to research. I don't give a about shit about research. If the research is true, how come this and this and this are like that? And they can't debate facts. They can't debate history that it's happened. So all you got to do is arm yourself with some basics and you're going to be good to go. You're going to be able to debate a lot of people that are smarter than you on specifics. So here's a, here's an example. Uh, gun control. Guns came up. And my daughter, you know, is very sentimental about what happened with all, with all of the school shootings. She feels that. And I feel it too, man. Who, who, I mean, who's not going to be affected by that? You know, children and teachers dying over some crazy shit. Okay, the question is, do we need to do something? Absolutely. Okay, so let's all debate without getting butt hurt. Let's all debate on how we can make this better. So, of course, you know, the most popular thing is gun control. And so, of course, as soon as you say gun control, the Senate Second Amendment people are going to go ape shit. So that's not a good way to approach it because you alienate people. Okay, but I'm a, I'm a Second Amendment guy, but I'm good with gun control. So I can talk to you. I can talk to you. She goes, we should outlaw every AR-15. I said, baby, you can't say that because a good gun expert will prove you wrong in two seconds because they'll show you seven guns, seven guns that look like the AR-15 and they work nothing like the AR-15. So, and they're going to ask you, all right, which ones would you outlaw? And you're going to go, uh, 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 all of them? And they're going to go, this one is less powerful. This one is more powerful. This one is used for hunting for X, Y, Z. This one is used for this for X, Y, Z. None of them are automatic. Every gun on, in, in the world that you can sell is a semi-automatic. That means one action, one bullet. So now you're, you're like, okay, outlaw all of them. Well, you can't do that because it, it, it's not a smart decision. I said, so you can't do that. You got to find another argument. We got to find another argument for gun. Do we need gun control? And I said, listen, there's no gun control that you can do that will legislate or eliminate insane people because there's always been, there's always been guns. Always. As a matter of fact, if you look at some of the, stat the statistics, we've had per capita the same gun ownership per household more or less 5%. It's always been in the 40s since the 50s, since this, this thing was being looked at. Um, you'll look at the, the states with the most amount of guns. Some of them have the least amount of gun violence, you know. So somebody that goes into statistics and can analyze statistics and all that, that can beat the shit out of you. I don't give a fuck because that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is, look, if you did away with guns, okay, did away with guns. The last shooter killed one person, injured five, six, seven, eight, ten of them. Okay. All right. If that guy didn't have a gun. Okay. So let me ask you this. Are you going to make flamethrowers that you can buy for 500 bucks without a permit from the internet? Are you going to make those illegal? Okay. Imagine somebody coming in with that shit. What the fuck? So you're going to eliminate AR-15s and not, and not uh, 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 flamethrowers? Okay, they're available. Look in the internet. They're available. Five hundred bucks. Can you imagine somebody sticking a hose? They don't even have to be in there. Go in a classroom. I don't even want to see that. Okay, so you eliminate every gun. Which, by the way, rifles are are, are less than than three percent of all the killings are rifles. I think it's five hundred and change per year, versus six thousand with handguns. So let's say you eliminate all guns. All guns except police. Okay, let's go there. Then some crazy motherfucker is going to do the flamethrower. No, we're going to do away with flamethrowers too. All right. Then some guy is going to come in with his, you know, F-150. Look at the right sidewalk where children are walking away from school and say, well, there's no trees on that sidewalk. I can, I can run over, you know, 30 of them here in six seconds. So what are you going to eliminate? The, the all pickups, 
they'll do it with a Hummer. All SUVs, they'll do it with a car, heavy car. What happens if a guy goes into a soccer field, runs right over the, the chain link fence, and now you've got 100 kids in the soccer field, and he is just going fucking Pac-Man style. By the time the police gets there, the dude's damaged how many kids? So what are you going to do? You cannot legislate insanity away. You can't. You can't. They did away with quaaludes in the 80s because people were abusing them. What are they abusing that now as of late? Opioids. What now? Fentanyl. There's nothing you're going to do that's going to legislate insanity away. So you, you, first of all, you have to create a healthier environment and a healthier society, healthier schools, more order, more activities for children, healthier activities for children, more normal behavior for children, okay? So this doesn't fucking continue, all right? You want to control guns? Look, I'm all for gun control. What have we controlled pretty fucking good, okay, that is deadly, that everybody has, everybody that's an adult has? A car. A car can be deadly, right? Okay. We control cars. In order to drive a car, what do you need? A driver's license. Why, why a driver's license? Because when you do a driver's license, not only do you have to take a test, which means at least you got to fucking read, all right, and you got to be normal, you have to take a live driving test, and that gives the instructor the ability to see if you're fucking flaky, crazy, or, or, or otherwise, okay? Not a high-level screening, but at least a, a screening, okay? So now you have a driver's license, okay? Then what do you need? What does the cop ask you for? Driver's license, insurance, and registration. You need an insurance, whatever that means, a gun insurance or whatever. Everybody pays, you want to own a gun? Everybody pays $5 a month. So when, you, when, you, when people act crazy, we can fund the victims or whatever. Okay, $5 per month. You can't afford $5 a month, don't fucking own a gun. And then what do you need? Registration. That gun has to be registered to your name. Daddy buys it for you, no problem. You go into the local police or you know dm whatever and you register the gun to your name you get caught with a gun okay you get caught with a gun and it's not registered to you it's registered to your dad it's registered to your wife it's registered to you all right you need this registered to you if you're going to carry it here's a ticket get it registered if not next time i catch you okay now you're on record you've been caught without a registered gun to your name Next time I catch you, it's going to be a $600 fine and 30 days probation. Third time I get you, it's going to be six months in jail, fucking mandatory, and a $1,000 fine, which you will pay when you come out and start working. If you start doing that, control guns the way you control vehicles. We're not outlawing vehicles. We're not outlawing vehicles, but what we, we have rules about vehicles, right? We have rules. We have, for example, you can't dark tint a vehicle to the point where the police can't see you. Okay, you can't make a gun automatic. We catch you with an automatic gun and then says, if it's this, this, de this degree of punishment. If it's this, this degree of punishment. If you were caught once upon a time with a silencer, that was fucking 10 years. Now you can own a silencer with a permit, with fees and all that shit. Okay, so if you're an outstanding citizen and we have a record of you, all right, fine. Most people that, create, that, that commit crimes with guns of all types, okay, are not outstanding citizens. They've had fucking problems. And if you have a problem, if you have a ticket, you are on uh, a system. If you have a, a, um, a warrant out for your arrest and you get stopped for a traffic ticket, what happens? You get fucking arrested. If you have a record of DUI, you can't get a driver's license, okay? They, we already have that shit set up. Do the same thing for guns. You're not outlawing guns. Any gun dealer or any gun collector will be happy to register all his guns and do what the fuck he needs to do. Why? Because he loves guns. He has the right to own guns. I have the right to own guns. And I, I don't mind telling the government all the shit I have. So if they're going to fucking raise arms against me, they got to know that the citizenship is fucking ready. That's a, that's a good deterrent. So anyways, we talked about that. We talked about trans issues, okay? And not to divulge family information, but my, let's put it this way. My, my children 
uh, have a lot of LGBTQ friends that they hang out with and all that. So they're very sensitive to that topic. Fine. Every single one of them, as much as they're compassionate and they uh, love the L LGBTQ, every single one of them says that this whole trans and LGBTQ plus has hurt them and has hurt their friends. They say they don't know one friend that has benefited from all this bullshit gay parades and all this shit that they're doing. You know, uh, gay pride at, at the elementary school. Uh, let's have cross-dressing day for teachers at some schools. What the fuck is that? You know, teaching first graders and second graders that shit. Taking elementary school kids to, to, to uh, you know, uh, cross-dressing and trans parties and shows uh, uh, simulating sexual acts, dressing inappropriately for 10, 12-year-olds. And that's part of the school activity. The, 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 every single one of my kids said, that's fucked up. All I wanted, all we ever wanted, my friends and I, is to leave us alone, to leave me and my friends alone. You know, whether I'm gay or not, leave my gay friends alone. We should be able to have parties. We should be able to do shit, buy things, get together, uh, own houses together, marry each other. Fuck it. Go, go get married. Go get married. Fine. Fine. Find a, a minister or find a court that, that'll marry you. and That's fine. That's all they ever wanted. They didn't want this trans shit party. So all of me, my kids, all of my kids that hang out with a large portion of LGBTQ plus people, basically gay and, you know, gay and lesbian, whatever you want to call them, people, friends, you know, they, all they want to do is be left alone. They don't want to impose their shit on everybody. And they hate the trans movement. They can't take it. My kids can't take it. So we talked about how to formulate that, how to express that. You know, and that's what I love being a father and, and sitting there with my kids to make them think. I said, listen, I'm the guy you want to spar with because I consider myself a pretty good debater. I can debate things because I, I know how to bring things to the basic and, de and debate from the point where I'm strong with the facts that can't be refuted. And I try to tie facts together to create concepts that will support my position. Okay. And when you got facts, 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 and you tie them together nicely, they're hard to beat. I'm not saying they can't be beat, but they're hard to beat, all right? At best, I get into stalemates. I don't have too many people where, where, where I have to go, you know what, you got me there. I don't, I don't debate too many things that, that I get there because I'm very good at expressing myself in an intelligent manner, and that's what I wanted to do with them. So guns came up, LGBTQ came up. What else came up? Oh, and then the minority, and we ended up saying, you know what? We talked about BML, we talked about trans and LGBTQ+, we talked about the whole Bud Light and uh, UFC thing, you know, I'm going, they're trying to push it down our throats. We never said they never had the rights, okay? But now they want us to accept their style of living and to applaud it. And we don't do that. We will never do that. So there's always going to be a riff. So here's the kicker. All these minorities, because in, in the old days, gays were, what, 4% of the population, 3% of the population, a very small, single-digit population. Now some of the surveys show that 20% of our kids, 20% of our kids, okay, um, see themselves as some form of LGBTQ+ which means it's a cultural thing. It's a cultural acceptance. It's almost like a cultural uh, endorsement and um, motivating you to do that because that's hip. That's becoming hip. If you want attention, you do that. You want attention, grab the same sex's hand and everybody will go, ooh, okay? So that's why it's gone from three, 4% to 20%, depending on what you read, okay? But it, it's single digit to over 20% double digits. That's a huge increase. People don't, don't cross over that fast. So I said, look, it's a cultural thing. But isn't it crazy that the minorities making a big noise, okay? Because who's making a big noise, okay? Black Lives Matter, okay? Made big noise when? George Floyd. And at the end of the day, the facts, the facts are that George Floyd, okay, A, a black man, fact. B, okay, former criminal, that held up a pregnant woman 
put a gun to her stomach while his friends emptied out her house or stole from her. All right. He did years for that. Okay, when he got arrested, he was not complying. He did not die from asphyxiation. The medical uh, coroner came out with that. He died because he had enough fentanyl in him to kill a fucking horse. And he stopped breathing. That's what the coroner says. Not me. Read it. Read it. It's available. But this man had a longer procession and a longer funeral than Martin Luther King. I, I don't see the, the equivalent. I don't see the equivalent. Okay, they jailed up the, 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 uh, the uh, police officer, which I think he should have been reprimanded for sure. Lose his badge, fine. Lose your pension, fine. But now we know that that dude, that dude is, that dude is being hung publicly to quiet some people. That's fine. I don't, I don't love it. I don't hate it. It is what it is. Okay, so Black Lives Matter, the trans community, and all of these other minorities that are very small parts of the population are making noise for these minorities. And you know what they're doing? Hurting the minorities. They're actually hurting the minorities because they're turning people that don't want to eat that shit, okay, against black people, against LBGTQ because we're had it up to here with that bullshit. You know, when I'm watching UFC, to tell you the truth, here, here, comes, here it comes from a father, heterosexual father. I love UFC. Why? Because it's a fucking alpha male shit. Are there gay people uh, fighting? Yes, male and female, fine, okay? But they're not making out, okay, in the octagon. We, I, I look at that to exp feel my alpha. Uh, I have my son, my friends, my dude friends, and everybody here, my alpha, my, my female friends, my wife and her friends, alpha all kind of going. And all of a sudden, I get a fucking commercial where two guys are, are, are making out. You know, it's, it's not the shit that I want to see, bro. Do I have them, do I want them killed? No, do I want them eliminated? No, 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 no. It's just not what I want to see. Now, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it like this, but it's not what I want to see. It's not what I want to see, but yet they're pushing it and they're pushing it and they're pushing it. You know, interracial couples, notice, notice. Insurance commercials, car commercials, this commercial, that commercial. Interracial, interracial, I'm fine. I'm fine with interracial shit, but why do you have to just fucking start throwing it out there? Lesbians and interracial, lesbians and interracial, lesbians and interracial, gay. Why do you just have to start throwing it out there? You know, just to make a point for the 1%, the 4% of the population. I'm just saying, that kind of shit turns people against the cause because you're railroading people into it. All right, so that's that's all I'm going to say. We could discuss that as a family. This weekend it was awesome. So, anyways, uh, we discussed uh, and Andrew Tate. My daughter's like, I hate him. Okay, you have every right to hate him. I don't love him. I don't hate him. I listen to Andrew Tate like I listen to Pierce Morgan, like I listen to Tucker, like I listen to um, uh, A. Smith. I, I listen to people I don't like. Why? Because I want to know what they're saying. Because if you want to know what the other side is up to, listen to this. If you want to know what the other side is up to, allow them to manipulate you enough for them to show you their direction. Give them power. Give them power to talk comfortably. Give them power to give directions. Give them power to give instructions. That's when you're going to know. Because if not, if you keep them at bay, they're, they're going to they're gonna show you one face. But when you allow them okay, to manipulate you. That means you got to be humble. You got to be humble. You got to bring yourself down, almost submissive type, right? Let them guide you. Let them tell you what their opinions are and where, what you should do and all this shit, right? Don't be such an authority. Take a, take a humility pill and shut the fuck up and let them talk because then you're going to know how to defend yourself against them because you're going to know, you're going to know what they want you to do and how they're planning to go about it. That's how you deal with the enemy. Let them manipulate you a little bit. Just don't let them control you. Let them manipulate you a little bit so they can show you who they are and where they're going and where they want you to go. Then you can act accordingly. So we were talking to Andrew, Andrew Tate. He, she was, he's a misogynist. He's a... Blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, okay, wait a minute. Maybe he is. I'll grant you that. Can you show me a video? Can you point me to a video? Can you show me if, if, it's, if, if he's that easy of a target? You should have the worst 
sayings or the worst highlight of Andrew Tate. And it'll come up. Hit that in Google and see if you can find it on, on YouTube. And we tried. And we tried. And, you know, of course, Andrew Tate, I'm sure, he, I'm sure because I've heard him say shit that I go, oh, I don't agree with that. Find it. Find it. But I said, don't give me three seconds. Don't, don't, don't pull the Joe Rogan and the word, the word nigger shit on me. Because they took Joe Rogan and they put some fucking interns on, on 1,400 podcasts and they pulled out every nigger word out of his fucking 1,400 podcasts and they had him for 15 minutes saying, nigger, so you mean to tell me he called you a nigger? So you called him a nigger. So he referred to you as a nigger. Did, 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 did. He didn't call anybody a nigger. He didn't call anybody. And every time I said nigger, my kids went, ah! I go, are you that fucking soft? Are you that, where a word can trigger you like that? Are you that fucking soft? Well, what if I say cock? Ah! Really? So you guys talk about motherfuckers, this and that, and you fucking use words like, I'm like, holy shit, that was some nasty shit you said. But one word will fucking trigger you where you want to jump in the intercoastal. I said, where did we go with that? It's a nasty word. I go, yeah, it's a nasty word, but it's still a word. Okay? It's, and it's such a word where, where, you know, you can use the word to hurt, and you can use the word funny. And I, if you see my, my, my office, I toured with a black, all black group. I was the only non-black. I was the only brown guy because everybody else was really black. For four years, I played Bethune, Cookman, and Florida A&M homecoming. So don't talk to me about black and that I'm a uh, racist. Fuck, you will never find that shit. I've lived with black people. I toured with black people. I did more black events than, than anybody I know that's not black, okay, for four years. I have black managers. I have black friends. They come to my house. Uh, I open invitation. So don't be fucking telling me I'm more racist. No, I'm just not afraid of your shit of the fucking fear you put into people. Because this is a fear that was made up of a word. It's a fucking word, get over it. Like Candace Owens says, life is tough, buy a fucking helmet. I'm too old for this shit. She was too pregnant for this shit. You know, I'm not telling you to insult people, okay? I'm not telling you to use the word. All I'm telling you, it's just a word, God damn it. Get fucking over it, okay? You're living in, in a world where a black man can be president for two terms. We got black people ahead of the Pentagon. We have three black women ahead of the top three Ivy schools. Jesus, fuck, don't talk to me about racism and systemic racism and all shit. You're living in a fucking country where there's no better place to live as a black person than the United States. No better, no better. Are there assholes? Yes, there are assholes everywhere. Are there assholes that, that are gonna insult you? Yeah. And if they don't insult you for being black, they're going to insult you for being short. They're going to insult you for being overweight. They're going to insult you for being bald. They're just going to insult you for being an asshole, which is non-descriptive. What, are you going to get butt hurt over that? No, you got to be better than that. You got to be better than that. As a society, we got to get over this bullshit. Okay, so that was the whole fucking weekend. And my children were like, holy shit. So anyways, they couldn't find anything on Andrew Tate. I got a good, I got a couple of good Andrew Tate interviews. Where Pierce Morgan let him talk. Where Joe Rogan let him talk. I go, listen to the guy. They let him talk and let, let, let him rant. You know, um, and so I said, find something that's derogatory about women. And if it is, I'll say, yeah, that, was, that sucked. Does he say some things that I, I wouldn't say in that way? Yeah. But if I believe, I, if I agree with 70 to 80% of the concept that he's putting forward, I don't agree with a lot of the shit he's done. I don't agree with a lot of shit he says and the way he expresses himself. But 80% of his approach is be strong if you're a man, be productive, have your own money, protect the weak, protect the people that you're, that you're responsible for, be formidable, represent your last name. That, that's all he's, he's about. Fuck, what, what are you going to fucking do, do with that? I wish everybody talked that shit, you know? And I hope that a lot of kids don't do everything he says and don't do everything, but I hope a lot of kids at least listen to the good aspects of that and carry that forward. B make your father proud. Make your last name proud, okay? Make your own money. 
Protect the people that are, that are responsible for you, that you're responsible for. And if you're responsible for them, you have a certain authority over them. And, and you can express your opinion on things they will or will not do. Why? Because you're responsible for them. And that includes your mom, that includes your wife, that includes your children. Okay? If your wife is responsible for you and protecting you and guiding you and providing for you, then things change. Things change. But you know what? For the most part, men don't want that. Men, men don't want an alpha female. Are there alpha females? Of course. Can they go and fucking do special forces and kill people? Go ahead. Make your, make your fucking move. Make your fucking move. But there's a lot of places, there's a lot of places in the Middle East, especially, where women are fucking super disrespected. Where are the, where's the Me Too movement? Where's the Me Too movement? Let's go, bitches. Suit up, boot up, armor up, and go across the seas. Take a little ride in an Air Force jet, you know, or Air Force, you know, big ship. Go over there, all 20,000 females that can do anything men can do, that they don't need men. Go ahead and protect those women. Go ahead and save those women. Go ahead. Save them from stoning. Save them from uh, uh, oppression. Save, save them from not being able to drive, not being able to go to school, not being able to fucking talk, not even being able to dress the way they want to dress, not being able to express themselves anywhere, not being able to hold... Any, any big office or anything, go ahead. That's happening all over the world. Okay, Me Too movement. Let's go, bitches. Let's go. Suit the fuck up and go and represent your own. Oh, no, no. That's the job of men. So here's, here's, here's the uh, dichotomy. These fucking minorities, they're all against, for the most part, against white males, because this is a tyranny and this is an oppressive society, those minorities want the white males to join the armed forces, fly across the fucking ocean, and defend them. That's fucked up. No, no. If you want to defend black people, okay, Africans, you know what's going on in Africa? It's savagery. Get your people, okay, and go over there and defend them. That's not fucking happening. No, why? Because you want the armed forces. You want the U.S. armed forces to do that fucking job. Okay, what are the armed forces? The people who go and battle, 98% are males. And a good portion are white. So, so we can use the white males and the males in general, blacks included and Hispanic included, we can use them to fight Me Too movements and to fight black movement, and to fight minority movements, but when we're here, they shit on us. Hmm. That's fucked up. <laughs> that's fucked up. But anyways, that's my rant, my social rant. You're going to get a lot of those, so I'm going to treat you just like my kids. Next. We listen. Uh, somebody says, strengthening specific technique versus strength for the technique. When do I strengthen a technique? You know, they're, they're asking about functional training. How does functional training address strengthening a technique? Functional training does not address strengthening a specific technique. For example, an arm bar. For example, a half Nelson. Positioning, which is technical prowess. Technique is what allows you to be in a position where the technique can't be defended. Why? Because an arm bar puts the hips here, one leg here, one leg there. So you got one leg two legs, and the entire posterior chain pulling on this. So I got the entire body, two legs, hips, and fighting against this elbow. What kind of bicep do I, I can have an orangutan bicep. I can have a gorilla bicep, and a good jiu-jitsu player will put a fucking gorilla in a armbar. It won't be easy, but he'll put them in an armbar. And a gorilla could be like 10 times stronger than a man. Because a technique operates on levers on levers and if you have the wrong lever there's no strength that can help you so don't associate techniques with strengthening techniques we strengthen patterns of force generation not techniques techniques are part of practice repetitive practice repetitive practice repetitive practice getting in the right position where you put a lot of muscle against a little bit of a little bit of muscle and there's nothing you can do to this muscle for it to compete against this muscle mass period end of story that is a technique okay so we don't strengthen techniques in the gym 
we strengthen general patterns and we give you enough conditioning where you always have the whereabouts. You're always fresh enough to be in the right position because in jiu-jitsu they say what? Position before submission. If you're in the right position, the submission is easy. If you're in the wrong position, you can pull all you want. In judo, it's called kusushi, the unbalancing. If you set up, if you tug, if you pull, if you move your opponent, and you get them to react to your stimulus, whether it's a movement, a pull, a tug, whatever, and you get them on a single leg, then he falls easy. Okay, it's the unbalancing. It's the setup. It's the position, putting you on two feet while the opponent is on one foot or maybe in midair transitioning through a shuffle. When that happens, the guy weighs zero has zero base and you're in your base. You attack at that point, shit's over. Okay, so condition before submission. Position before submission. Position before submission. And condition before position. So we condition you so you can always put yourself in the right position so you can get your submission. And that is the sequence that we do. Okay, so that's why we don't, like, if you want to get better at surfing, I'll give you stronger legs, I'll give you rotation, I'll give you all that shit. But I can't give you the surfing technique. Why? Because you got to get out on the wave. But what if we put the surfboard on top of a BOSU ball? Uh, then I teach you static balance, which has nothing to do with dynamic balance. Because static balance deals with vertical loads all the time. Dynamic balance deals with every single aspect of physics, from inertia to conservation of angular momentum, to coefficient of friction, to lever systems, to center of mass, to gravity, all of that shit, okay, is a, 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 a mixture, a, a, a mixture, a soup of shit that you have to consume in order to have dynamic balance. And you can't mimic that in the gym. So that's why we no longer do balance, which is the next question. How come you don't do any more static balance? Because of the principle of specificity. Static balance has nothing to do with dynamic balance because the proprioception is different. If everything is up and down because of gravity and I have a stable, uh, uh, um, a constant uh, platform with a center of mass that's, let's say, stable or rolling, that's all I got. I got vertical. But when I step on a wave or I'm skating or anything, I deal with angles. I deal with turns. I deal with centripetal force. I deal with all that shit. That's all part of the dynamic balance. And you can't take static balance and get a, a, a result on that. There's no fucking way. That's like practicing a 50-yard dash and thinking you're going to get an improvement in your marathon. It, it's totally different energy systems. It's a totally different world, totally different stride, totally different start totally different time, totally different. So that's why I no longer do static balance. Fuck that shit. I get you in enough condition so you can do 20 waves instead of five, instead of 10, instead of 15. And when you're doing your 20 waves, you're sharper. So you can work on your technique that much better. That's what I do as a strength and conditioning coach. So that is general strength, some functional stuff. Okay, you can get cute with it, but don't go crazy on it. Don't be putting no goddamn... Uh, surfboard on top of a BOSU ball because that, that now you're getting stupid. Now you're like the guy with the agility ladder underneath the fucking water. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's proprioception. Dumbass. Anywho. All right. And why do you say that coaching and exercise is like practice? Is it really? No, it's not really practice because obviously you don't have a person in front of you. You don't have a, a dummy that's the right size. No. So what we do is we try to get as close to a movement, whether it's a wizard, an underhook, anything like that. We get as close as we can without going crazy. And then we'll practice holding and doing something, holding an elbow, hold elbow, walk forward, elbow, walk forward. If it's an underhook, we'll put the underhook, tie you back down here, boom, walk forward, bam, walk forward, bam, move your foot, bam. Practice, practice. And then you gotta, in, your, in, in the mind of the person, you gotta tell them, you're not an IHP. You're going through the movement. You can't go through the movement. You got it's in practice. You have a hundred hook. Throw that goddamn elbow right into the eye. You got to do damage. You're in the octagon. You're in the octagon. Cut him. It's the first round. Cut him. He's in the underhook. Cut him. Turn sideways and go. You got to put him there. Why? Because of the wet dream phenomena. You have a wet dream. Shit happens. Nobody was there. Why? 
because the body doesn't know the difference between reality and what the brain tells it. To the body, what the brain tells it is reality. So if you're here with an underhook, if you're here with a wizard, if you're here with uh, alternating and you're practicing elbow, I mean, uh, wrist control, wrist control, wrist control. If you're here and you're practicing, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, tie, uh, no, uh, 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 ah, tie, uh, 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 collar tie, tie collar. Uh, anyways, if you're practicing, you know, one arm, one arm, uh, not a plumb, but one arm, and you're practicing this and you're practicing that and you're in there, the body will say, okay, I'm in there. And when I have a uh, collar, collar tie, I think it's called collar tie, necktie. Anyway, when you have one of those, okay, you'll, you'll, you will have had that reaction. I get this, I'm banging. I get this, I'm banging. I got wrist control, I'm banging. I've got wrist control and I'm moving it because it's just not wrist control, let it go. Because if I let you go and you react quick, quick enough, you can, you can close the attack. But if I'm moving you, if I got wrist control here and I got a, 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 a tie lock here, okay, and I'm moving you, I'm moving you and you are in the middle of taking a step, I can let this go and, and, and hit. Why? Because you can't do shit with this arm until you take that step. Because the kusushi, I have moved you. I'm anticipating the movement so I catch you in transition while I'm launching the attack. There's always a setup. It's never like, eh, bom, eh, bom, eh. no, it's never robotic like that because I don't want to teach you that. I want to teach you set up the movement, yank them. When they come out, bam, okay? Move them. When they move, bam, move, go, move, go, move, go. Because when you move, they got to react. You got to already assume the reaction so you hit them while they're in transition. In transition, you get a free attack. So we're always doing that, and when we're coaching, that's what we're doing, making sure that the person is not here. They're in practice. They're in the octagon, or they're at Kill Cliff. They're at ATT. They're at uh, MMA Masters. They're there with a guy. Well, bang the elbow that you can't bang in practice. Bang the fucking elbow. At least have the intent. The intent, because the intent, the body believes is reality. Okay? If the mind tells it it's reality, reality like the wet dream. Okay, you got to tell the body it's there. You're in practice. You're in practice. You're in practice. How many elbows do you get in practice? Hard elbows. You can't get one in practice. So let's say you go a few elbows in practice. Well, you can get 100 elbows here at IHP with a uh, uh, collar tie. I think it's called a collar tie. You know, bam. So anyways, that's what we mean when we say strength and conditioning, especially that functional strength and conditioning is practice because we visualize practice really hard on the exercises that we can and we are con we are convinced we are convinced that we're having the wet dream effect okay that shit's happening the body sees a shit happening they're practicing things that they really can't practice because it's it's really too hard you know how can you practice hard elbows on somebody that's down like like uh, gregory put on uh, two lillen fuck man those elbows i'm surprised the guy was still standing afterwards I mean, he actually got up and walked out. I thought he was, an elbow like that from Gregory should put you in the hospital. I'm surprised the skull didn't fracture. I mean, he went in there with everything. He practices that here. I can show you the practice. He can't practice that shit at Kill Cliff. He'll kill somebody, you know? So anyways, that's how we mean, all right? So I hope you under, uh, you, you uh, enjoyed that rant. You enjoyed the, uh, the technical stuff and the real shit and the crazy shit because it's all part of wisdom. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about wisdom next time around. What it is, how you get it, and what it means to have it. All right? We'll see you. Well, guys, welcome back. He went on a little rant today. You know, PG-13-ish. Um, yeah, that closes out for episode 10. Um, again, I want to thank you guys for always tuning in, always watching the podcast. We're getting great feedback. I'm going to see if we can get Mark Andre... Okay, I know he fights, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. If we could get him out on the show for five to ten minutes, maybe fight week or maybe while he's traveling up to Canada, just to give you his insight, uh, how training camp went, uh, how the New Year's is going for him, and what he thinks is going to be the result for UFC 297 in Canada. I'm super happy for him. This is back-to-back -back fights in Canada, and hopefully we can get back-to-back -back victories. Um, and both guys that he fought, I'm actually a fan of, so... You know, Chris Curtis, I, I wish you kind of luck, I guess. But anyways, um, let both men settle it. June, I mean, January 20th, okay, UFC 297. Tune in, 
pay-per-view, 10 o'clock. I think Mark Andre might be the opener. He might not. If anything, tune in right at 4 o'clock when the prelims go on and get a bag of popcorn and sit your ass on the couch. All right, guys. Again, drop a comment, share it, like it, subscribe it, report it. I don't care. Motion is a lotion and lotion is promotion. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We love you. Have a great week.